from 25 people. Let me first thank Boris Spiegel for his outspoken leadership in this issue. And let me share with you for a moment the perspective of the United States of America on this most troubling and puzzling problem that we face. In America, the problem of Nazism is an historical problem. It is not understood to be a problem of our daily existence today. And in the American experience, aside from the war against Germany, American Nazis were perceived as crazy people. There was a man named George Lincoln Rockwell, and he would walk around and salute, and he was ignored, and he went away eventually. So that as Europe faces resurgent Nazi movements, the question in America is, does anybody believe it? And the great work of World Against Nazism is to publish the facts when it was written in America that in certain Baltic countries, veterans of the Waffen-SS were to be given state pensions. It caused a small fear. It became an example of what you and I know to be the truth in Europe today, but a truth that America has not embraced. The problems of immigration, of world economic downturn, have been a fertile field in Europe for these kinds of things. Now in America we have anti-immigration movements, and we have extreme right-wing movements, but they have not been connected to the history of Nazi movements and Nazi outbursts in Europe. Therefore, I propose on behalf of the American delegation, that the work of World Without Nazism be extended to the United States so that the documentation, the proof, the evidence of what we've seen in so many countries become known to the American people. American people are a great and good people, but sometimes Europe is a very far, far place. If we are to create, again, the conditions for a worldwide rejection of the Nazi ideology, then it is imperative that the evidence, the discussion, the argument, the effort be extended to the United States. In other words, we are at a much earlier point in our awareness of this problem than are you and your European colleagues. But the firmness of the United States to oppose these sorts of racist ideologies is unequivocal. We will again, if the horror becomes necessary, join in whatever it takes to restore justice to the world. Let me conclude with one observation. In America, we have additional complicating ideas. We have the idea of free expression. We have something called the First Amendment to the Constitution. That protects even hate speech. So in America, we could not, nor should we, attempt to legislate against certain symbols and certain ideas. We will be part of this continuing struggle because it is the right thing to do. We will do it in the way America does it, appreciative of American values, appreciative of free speech, but firm in the end, in the conviction that never again will peoples be pitted against peoples, religions against religions, unmitigated and untold of slaughter. If those currents persist in Europe and elsewhere, we will stand firmly, clearly, and strongly in opposition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. I'd like now to invite to the podium uh, Mikhail Ostro.